giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, fellow firsters, and welcome to this week's installment of your Mouth of the South Region Recap Show. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Marco. And I'm Michael. Thank you all very much for spending a few minutes with us this evening. If you saw our show last week, you know our format has changed for the rest of the season, and our remaining shows will be spent getting to know uh, some of the teams in our region and doing a shallow dive with those teams where we discuss their organization, season, robot, whatever else comes to mind. This week, we're excited to talk to folks from a great team in the Austin, Texas area representing Westlake High School. With us this evening, say it with me, boys and girls, is two, four, six, eight. Team Appreciate. Team appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as if getting to know a little bit more about how a hugely successful team like 2468 works wasn't enough, we also have free stuff. And we all know free stuff is best stuff, so to learn what you, our esteemed viewers, have a chance to win this evening, here's our producer, Tyler. Yeah, thanks, Marco. So we're going to be giving away at this show. Big thanks to Rev Robotics for giving away the Throughbore Encoder, specifically designed for the end user in mind, allowing teams to place sensors and locations closest to rotation that they wish to measure. Long story short, it does really cool things, and uh, this is off-season, guys. So that means it's a great time to experiment with new things that you have going on. Take it home, learn what it does, see what you can do with it, and bring it back to your team. That's what it's all about here. Uh, so we'll have a keyword uh, later on during the show to win this giveaway. Uh, and, of course, our subscribers do get five times luck because you know we, we rig it, but just slightly for our subscribers. Uh, but please join Fun Nation. We'd love to have your support. Stay loud, live, and independent. Uh, and uh, we'll be giving this away a little bit later on during the show. All right, so let's start off by giving our guests the opportunity to introduce themselves. Please tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what your primary role on the team is. Hi, I'm James. I'm one of the design co-leads and base driver for 2468. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm one of the programming co-leads and one of the presenters on our team. Hi, I'm Norman Morgan, otherwise known as Coach Norm, and I'm the uh, head coach and robotics coordinator for Westlake High School and Eanes ISD and FRC. All right. Well, thank you, Gary, you guys very much for joining us today. Uh, chat, I just want to remind you guys that as we are going through the next 20 minutes asking questions to appreciate, uh, please put all your questions in chat and we're going to add them to our show and ask uh, our students and coaches here today. So, Marco, why don't you start us off with our first question? Sure. Uh, we'd like to start off by getting to know a little bit more about how the teams that we're talking to are structured and organized. And that question is particularly apt for you guys after this past season, which was the first where you also had a second team, Team 2687, Team Apprentice. So can you talk to us a little bit about how your organization roles and responsibilities are split up within your team now that you're a two-team organization? Yeah, so on 2468, uh, how we're split up is into main, two main uh, subteams, which is outreach and technical. Uh, we have five, uh, four different, five different subteams on the technical side, which is design, manufacturing, electronics, programming, and the appreciator program. Um, and the appreciators are the ones who go out during competition and help other teams. Uh, and we have outreach subteams. Uh, people on outreach work on different initiatives, such as SACA or the STEM Axie Conference of Texas, the Lilypad Project, STEM Connect, STEM Girls, Robox, Club Z, F uh, first signing day, social media, video, and submissions. Um, in terms of the two-team uh, structure with JB involved, we are one team during the off-season, so we train together under these uh, sub-teams. Uh, and then during season, we split off into two teams and work separately. Were there any big lessons um, or takeaways that you had from that first season as a two-team structure? I'll take that one. Uh, as Christine mentioned, uh, our goal in the fall was to try to be one team that worked together. Uh, our numbers have continued to grow here at our program, uh, not only in FRC, but FTC as well. And so the purpose of the junior varsity team was to introduce students into 
learning earlier and take on ownership of designs and manufacturing within their program. Uh, for me as the head coach, it was more of a balancing act of trying to balance uh, uh, being sure that I was meeting with both teams or mentors were meeting with both teams throughout uh, the work sessions in the evening. Uh, I think it was great for the JV team to actually get to watch the varsity team and see how they went through prototyping and how they went through testing, uh, which was uh, the whole purpose of, of the program is to try to get them to learn there as a freshman sophomores with limited boundaries. Uh, I, I liken it to bumpers at a bowling alley. Uh, we wanted to be successful, but we kept them uh, within the bumpers and within the lanes to try to keep them headed in the right direction. Christine mentioned earlier that you guys have um, different subsystems, design, programming, electrical, manufacturing. So do you have separate student leads for those uh, areas within the two teams? And if so, how do you go about selecting those leads for each of your two programs? So on like uh, 2468, oh, okay, yeah, go for it. So uh, for each sub team, we try to have uh, a co-lead for each uh, team. So for design, we have two leads. For programming, we have two leads. And for outreach, we have two leads. Um, and we try to identify leads a year in advance so we can give them the proper training. Uh, in addition to this, we try to have one senior and one junior lead every single year. So knowledge can be passed through uh, pretty smoothly. On the JV team, uh, there are no leads. Uh, everyone collaborates uh, together working on projects. All right, very cool. We're actually going to transition now some of these questions more toward um, your, se uh, your season and your robot. Uh, specifically, I kind of want to touch on uh, the last two seasons in the driver role. I know, uh, Coach Norm, you're the on-field coach, and James, you said you were a, a, a driver this uh, past two years. Am I correct? Yes. All right, cool. Well, last two years, we've had some great – I've seen great driving from you guys, so kudos to you. Um, I know you guys also have had some new mentors coming and helping out in the drive team area. Uh, I want to know how your drive team is selected and what specific training do you guys have in place for new drivers? So I've been the driver for the past three years. Um, and so how we try to identify drivers is uh, we really prefer new drivers or young drivers um, for the team uh, just so that they can get uh, training through working throughout the year. Um, so I was selected my sophomore year, so I was able to drive my sophomore, junior, and senior year. Um, and in terms of training, we try to really focus on isolated drills when training. Uh, so coach never lets us drive for more than two and a half minutes at a time. Uh, that's something that he's kind of built up throughout the years. I guess more on a, um, an elimination style of a question here. Has the two team organization allowed for more interesting or unorthodox elimination strategies? That was a question from, uh, from chat. We actually did do some planning and strategizing in uh, drive sessions at home uh, because we knew we had two robots that could climb and we knew we could, had two robots that could balance with each other and get a level balance. So we actually did practice that at home and we practiced about, uh, we practiced JV being a, a shuttle robot uh, or being a front, uh, front field robot to just clean up missed shots and to dump the logo trying to get towards uh, that RP. Uh, later in the season, that might have been a, a ball RP. Now, you guys had both teams at the start, so you were able to kind of work with each of the teams to develop their game strategy. Um, can you just walk us through how you guys go through that overall strategy at the beginning of the season, um, how you determine what your goals and targets are? James, I'll let you take this one, and I'll follow up with JV. Sure. So um, right when the game comes out, we read the game manual, um, like most teams. But then after that, we try to isolate each individual uh, component of the game. And based on that, we make a weighted decision matrix. After making the weighted decision matrix, we have to find the cutoff line after finding, uh, after sorting them out in list of highest priority to lowest priority. Um, and a really, really big thing that we try to focus on is maximizing RPs and always going for every possible RP for a specific game. For JV, their focus was we actually took it a little bit low, slower. Uh, we spent the entire fall studying every box. Uh, we uh, minimum competitive contest robots such as Spectrums and 118's every bot program. And we took the JV to the remix tournament and we went around and we looked at the every bots from last year. And so the students knew exactly what they were going to be 
trying to strive for, towards, and they actually had built a contest, a, a chassis, and a kit of parts chassis kit that we had at home. So uh, within a week, they had a driving base up and running, so they could actually start to see that first milestone. And then we focused entirely on, okay, what was the role that would actually get them picked at a tournament? And we were very close in design or close in strategy to what 118 provided with every bot. And we took every bot and made some modern, minor modifications to our robot to fit that role. Yeah. Now, I, know, I know you guys also worked about, um, well, you had already competed in one of the tournaments. So was there any change in strategy after that first tournament? And were you, like, were you going to make improvements on your robots? Was that going to differ um, with Apprentice that, and Appreciate? So for 2468, we, after Greenville, uh, our first competition, we made an improvement to every single system. So for the, we made, it, we, we made an improvement to the shooter, to the intake, to the climb, to the transfer. Um, nothing super major in terms of robot architecture. Uh, and for the JV team, they made huge improvements to their intake and climb. I'd say the biggest focus was on was on programming. So, Christine, you might want to address that on two four six eight. Yeah. So, going into Greenville, we had two different six ball autos that were designed to fit in with other people's strategies. Um, going into moving into Amarillo, we um, moved to an eight ball auto, uh, and so we had one eight ball auto primary auto, uh, and two six balls that were still designed the same way as they were in Greenville. Um, some other features we tried to add was wall following with ultrasonic sensors uh, and ball tracking with vision to help our auto be more accurate. Great. Well, it's certainly uh, a lot of the strategy pays off with uh, 2468's results, and obviously Apprentice did great and ranked really highly at the Greenville event. One of the things that just happened in chat is they threw up a quick poll saying, uh, should first let appreciate change their number or apprentice sorry change their number to eight six four two seventy percent of chat said yes so wanted to get a quick read of your thoughts would you guys pull that trigger if you could that would definitely be a very cool number to have <laughs> yeah. we've always looked around if we had the number eight six four two we named them team gratitude <laughs> I like it love nice. it. That's, that's awesome. So now for more fun stuff, let's start our giveaway. Um, Tyler, can you tell these wonderful people how they can be a winner? Yeah, once again, giving away uh, a through bore encoder from our friends at Rev Robotics. Hey, guys, just a big heads up, by the way. Of course, with everything going on with coronavirus, a lot of suppliers are working from home right now. So there are going to be delays in getting stuff out. Uh, and that's the case with most of our suppliers. But uh, they're still gracious enough to give stuff to give away, which I think is super cool. So make sure you give uh, Rev and the other suppliers a lot of love for doing that. Uh, but we're going to be using the keyword Rev Encoder if you're interested in winning this. Type Rev Encoder in chat right now. Don't forget, you do need to be following the channel, and subscribers get five times like to win. So good luck, everybody. We'll draw in just a few minutes. <coughs> All right, so continuing now with um, questions on the robot, um, we learned earlier this year in one of the deep dives of 118 that a lot of their big decisions, including what the robot name will be, have to be unanimous. So I'm curious about what is 2468's um, process for naming the competition and practice bots? And then the second part of the question for this year, I believe the competition bot name is Maple and the practice bot name was Rose. Could you share also the story behind those names for this season? Yeah, so I can take that one. Um, every year we try to name our robot something meaningful. Uh, and so the story behind Maple and Rose was um, a tribute to Dr. Woody Flowers. And so we picked a type of tree and a type of flower um, to name the robots after. And we settled on Maple and Rose eventually. That's awesome. And, and what is your usual process for deciding on what those names would be? Is there any particular way that it goes about it? Or is it more organic year on year? Uh, it's a little bit more organic. Um, a lot of ideas are tossed around, um, and there's no official meeting about it. It's just during meetings we talk about it sometimes, uh, and eventually uh, the the strong like the strongest names come out front. Cool. Um, to touch back a little bit on on what you talked about earlier, Christine, you guys showed some really solid autonomous. Uh, during the Greenwood Regional. In fact, um, I was there in person and you guys opened your very first ball match with a six ball autonomous. So can you give us some insight into what the main goals were for you uh, as a programming team and maybe what were one or two of the biggest challenges in that process and how you overcame them? Yeah, so um, I think our biggest goal every year as a programming team is just to make the driver's job easier. Um, so take as like much stress off of them during the match as possible. Um, one thing that James likes to say is he likes easy driving. Um, so that's our job as programmers. 
Um, and so one of the biggest challenges this year was that we decided to do new, uh, no pneumatics on a robot. And as a result of that, we had to double bag two systems. Um, and so the two systems that we originally had double bagged was the climb wheel and the funnel. Uh, and the intake and the accelerator wheel that shot into the shooter. And these being double bagged, it made the coding logic very difficult and the mesh between subsystems very, like, uh, very weak. So like, it was hard to figure out which subsystem was which when there's two motors that ran at the same time. Um, and so that made programming a little di more difficult this year. All right, so now that we've kind of seen some of the robot in, in pictures and slideshows that have gone through, uh, let's go into a little bit more detail. So I would like you guys to kind of walk me through um, how a ball gets from the floor into the goal. Um, and we got some pictures that we'll be sh uh, putting up on screen as, as you're talking about it. So go ahead and take it away. So starting from the floor, we have a folding intake. Uh, and so it rotates up and down uh, with a Neo motor. And so the balls get transferred into this thing called the funnel system. Um, it's a V, it's a powered V uh, type of system, very similar to Spectrum's. And so that funnels it into our, what we call the tunnel. And so the tunnel or transfer uh, transfers the balls into the accelerator wheel, which accelerates the ball into the turret, which then goes into the single flywheel shooter. And so uh, two balls get stored, or two and a half balls get stored in the transfer system. Uh, and the rest of the balls sit in the funnel system waiting to be shot. Uh, you guys talked, okay, so you said uh, a single motor flywheel. Uh, sorry if I missed that. Uh, the, a single wheel flywheel. We have two Neo motors on our flywheel. There we go. That's the answer I was looking for. Okay, cool. Um, anything about this system that is cool that isn't obvious at first glance that can be mechanically or software-wise? You want to take this, Christine? Yeah, I think uh, one thing that's cool uh, about this system is how we index it. So we have two beam brake sensors. Um, inside of our transfer uh, that are deep inside the robot and help us index our balls and figure out how many we're uh, taking in at a time. Speed rounds. All right, cool. Um, we're going to transition to some different style questions now as we're approaching the end of um, end of the interview here. Uh, how is your team staying in touch and connected during the time uh, or during COVID-19? So every day we, we have an open Zoom meeting uh, that a lot of our team members usually join. Um, we're very active in Slack uh, every single day. Coach usually, usually sends out um, some riddles around 7 o'clock uh, every single day to kind of keep us all um, interacting with each other. Uh, we still have weekly uh, sub-team meetings. So I know the design uh, team is meeting twice a week. The programming team is meeting once a week. Average team is still meeting once a week. Uh, so we're still taking uh, this time and trying to capture and trying to um, be as productive as we can. That's awesome. So a uh, question I had for you, Coach Norm, is, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to share a driver station with you and, and your drive team uh, on more than a few times. And one of the things that has always stuck with me from the very first time that we played a match on the same alliance is that you went to every single person on that alliance, shook their hand, looked them in the eye, told them, good luck, have fun. And I'm curious where that tradition started and why it's uh, clearly important for you to continue that uh, tradition today. Uh, I don't know where it really started. Um, as I transitioned from being a basketball coach, I had to learn not to yell at the guys in the striped shirts and had to realize <laughs> that up there wasn't like a real basketball game or football game. So uh, in the end, ultimately, this is not about wins and losses. It's not about trophies. The trophies are the students that graduate from your program. And having fun is most important. And if we're not having fun, then uh, we're doing something wrong. So to me, it's very, very important that the kids uh, connect to each other and they remember that the real purpose of being here is uh, to, to be focused on not the wins and losses in the robot, but, but what is the end goal? And so it's just one of those things that came very important to me to do every single match. That's awesome. Very, very well stated. So um, stepping away from the robot a bit, you guys are obviously known for having one of the most thorough and impactful outreach organizations around. You were recognized as a Chairman's Award finalist at the 2018 Houston World Champs. You have numerous initiatives. I know Christine mentioned them at the top uh, of the show there. Um, one of those is First Signing Day, which I think is now in its, first, uh, in its fifth year. Can you guys talk a little bit about what that is and how teams can get involved? Yeah, yeah I'll take everywhere. that. Christine, I'll take that right quick and then I'll let you follow up. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you guys are seniors. And for me, first signing day was a proposed by one of our, 
our robotics uh, mentors and one of our physics teachers. And we wanted to celebrate our seniors. So uh, uh, it started several years ago. And this year we're going to have a virtual first science day. Uh, I know the seniors are disappointed that their last season was cut short. Uh, we're happy to still be able to recognize these students for all they've dedicated towards our robotics teams and towards the program. Uh, first signing day is a national event, which uh, first graduates announce their post high school plans, whether it be college, whether it be university, whether it be a gap year, whether it be the military, uh, what is their next plan? So this year on May 20th, we're having a virtual first signing day. Uh, and you can find out more at first signing day on Twitter for, for more information. But the, the whole purpose is truly to set, to celebrate this year's seniors as they get ready to move forward. Christine, if you want to say something now. I think you covered it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. So just uh, as we're getting wrapped up here, just a couple, a question or two here real quick in uh, chat. Uh, they want to know what was the reasoning behind the decision for no pneumatics this year? So in the past, um, whenever we had pneumatics, we always had to worry about leaks. Um, it was uh, just, a, just a hassle, especially before getting onto the field. Um, and so we wanted to try to keep everything pretty simple. That's one thing we strive to be on the design side of uh, the team is to make as simple as simple as a robot as possible. Um, and so pneumatic, no pneumatics was kind of a byproduct of, product of that. Cool. Grab one, All right. Um, and then, um, Michael, did you have another? Yeah, I'm just. We got one more question before we're out of time. Uh, this is from Chat. Uh, how does your school support two FRC programs and five FTC teams? Seems like a huge organizational challenge. Yeah, so our primary source of funding actually comes from the summer camps that we host in the summer. Um, and so that's where most of it comes from. We also have revamped our pitching program this year. Um, and so we pitched to 18 different companies um, during the off season. Um, lastly, we also work concession stands and the parking lots during football games, and that helps us out a bit too. Awesome. Great, great. So um, before we wrap up here, um, we have a winner to announce. So Tyler, take it away. I was typing something. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, I, my microphone's hot anyways right now, apparently. So perfect. All right. So with that said, we're going to be giving away the uh, through board encoder uh, from our friends at Rev Robotics. I need an anti-mute button for when I forget to mute myself, really. Uh, so <laughs> once again, uh, Rev Robotics giving away the through board encoder. Super cool stuff. Go check them out at RevRobotics.com. Uh, and let's draw for a winner there. And the winner is going to be, we'll post that link one more time. Excuse me. Uh, Ra, 1236, who definitely uh, had a lot of questions in chat. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of them. This time goes quick. But congratulations. Please make sure you message me on uh, Twitch or on Discord, and we'll get you that sent out whenever they're able to send that out. Thanks again to Rev Robotics uh, for the awesome giveaway. All right, so James, Christine, Coach Norm, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us this evening and letting us get to know you and your fantastic team just a little bit better. We're thankful for your time to chat this evening and look forward to hopefully seeing you guys in person and on the field somewhere in the not-too-distant future. That's going to do it for us this evening. Remember, our show will be dark next week, but tune in to see some other shallow dives with other teams from across the country. We'll be back in two weeks, bringing you another in-depth look at one of the top teams in our region. As always, Fund needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fund Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know that this is the place to be to get their information their team needs. Don't forget to uh, check us out on any social medias of your individual preference, including Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, Michael, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all our moderators and chat. Uh, if you're watching us live, then up next for your viewing pleasure is Best of the West. Talk to all of you in two weeks. Adios. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.